The following clip has been taken from the Secret Energy Sovereignty Program. If you like what you've heard and you found it inspirational, we recommend that you navigate to secretenergy.com and join Ambassador Training. I also want to hear what uh, our brother Jeffrey had to say before we adjourn here. We're about three more minutes into this. I know it's just, it's got to happen at some point. I know we ride out. I'm sure there's folks on the line like, okay, if he stops today, that'll help. Just to digest. What's up, Jeffrey? Wholeness. Hey, guys. What's up? This is a beautiful, uh, beautiful conversation, by the way. And I'm definitely going to have to sit and just, just meditate through this whole thing again. So, um, yeah, this very interesting stuff has been happening with me lately, and I want to comment on the dreams and, and Venus and just get all of your eyes, everyone here, and especially Seven, get your eyes on this, because something really wild has been happening to me. Um, about So I'm on day 73 now of semen retention, and it was back at that point to where I had, through the dreams and things like that, I had realized that my brain there were because of the neuro, how the way the neuroplasticity of the brain works my brain had been altered from 16 years of 16 to 18 years of using pornography and the more that you research it and how it actually screws up the dopamine receptors and the motivation i realized that this was very much connected to to the illnesses that i, I had been experiencing and so once I actually ma made the connection and, and, you know, and because <laughs> at the level I'm at now, I can just be like, all right, never again, never going to do that again. And things begin to change very rapidly because um, I've done the retention before. You notice the benefits, the muscle, the, the strength, the motivation, the, the, the female attraction and all these things that people talk about. But this time was, was different. I, I began to actually experience pain in my in my sexual areas, I began to experience pain like deep in my abdomen when I would see a beautiful woman. And then, so as this just kept going, I, um, I was actually getting stuff done that I had never accomplished before. I had, you know, I was hiking mountains, I was going to hot yoga, and this was coming from someone who had been stuck in bed for a while, for years, <laughs> like literally, you know, chronic illness, seeing, you know, 40, 50 different doctors, taking every supplement, every medication you can imagine you know almost died from an opiate overdose so uh, I'm going through this process and I just I start having wet dreams and the first wet dream was I was in this memory of myself my bro my older brothers who were introducing me to pornography when I was younger and so I made the connection there I was like okay I'm on the right track like this is you know things are things are beginning to to clear up here and it just kept going and it's at the point I'm on day 73 now I am having a wet dream about once every 10 days or so. And last time it was, it was two, it was two in one night, but it's not to where I'm actually, you know, releasing the sexual energy. It's more of, of I'm having a full body orgasm in my sleep and, you know, I'm waking up and nothing's, nothing's changed. And it seems that it's always happening after, after a moment of where I have an accomplishment of when I go on a hike and I, I get to the top and it's, you know, this was something I told myself I couldn't do for a long time, for years, like I need to accomplish that. I did it. And then that following night, it would happen again. So it's just, you know, it, a lot of connections being made here. And I know Mark was saying that this, you know, the, these are a way that the, the body is, is protecting your energy because I can see how you were saying where it could push you down or you need, you would actually need to squish this down to create a foundation because I could get all, you know, that sometimes you get on that, that confidence scheme, but you know, you know, fools rush in, right. And you need to create that foundation. So I can see how this is, this is kind of keeping me in check because I can, I, you know, I'm kind of just like a bull get route about ready to be let out into the, into the arena. just kind of like hitting at the gate saying, Hey, just let me out, let me out. But so it's just something weird <laughs> for sure going on. And I uh, just wanted to share that and get your, get your eyes on that uh, and how that's working with the dreams. Well, for sure. First of all, thanks for sharing. You know, it definitely allows us to continuously, you know, keep opening up the space and, and to allow others to feel comfortable with, uh, you know, discussing whatever they're experiencing, because that's really what Tribe is all about. And it, it, with semen retention, the only thing I could speak towards this directly is, is that obviously the consciousness knows you know more about what's happening than than sometimes the con the, the subconscious knows more about what's happening than the conscious and what was talked about in ayurveda was very similar to how there are parts of our body that do need to drain from time to time that 
even the actual reproductive system for the male and the semen retention that there were times in which it would drain itself. And, and this is almost like how all the organs work is that they have to drain themselves from time to time. And what you find is, um, is that the actual fluids, as I was talking about the OG semen, that was the joke I gave, but the actual semens that actually become more cultivated and actually don't die off in the process of the cultivation move further up into areas where they're actually no longer able to be ejected from the lower channel. And so this sometimes appears as the, a bulge in the, the top part of the navel. Uh, sometimes a person doesn't have that necessarily. Also, sometimes there's a pain in this inner area until that, let's say it's a tube, until that tube opens back up to allow the semen to actually be able to go back up that channel. And, uh, and actually where that, that pain actually starts is in the, the lower back, like right where you find that kind of like that hole where your tail would be. You, which they say is like the, ax, the entry point somewhat to the root chakra, that that area will actually be sensitive to the touch because uh, the semen is actually accumulating back there, still pushing at that, that, uh, that valve, if you may, in order to gain access into uh, the dantain. And so I would just say stick with it, brother. Like the reality is, is that the, all the experiences that you're having uh, are normal. Uh, because obviously the body will know how to regulate its channels because for us, because this is the thing, every time you go like hiking or anything that builds up a lot of breath, like if you play, like football players have to deal with this, this is what they call testosterone. This is what they're talking about. So anything that you start doing, even if I'm lifting weights, if I'm breathing a lot, and I'm like running and all this kind of stuff, I'm far more sexual after that than I would be before then. And it's because all of that, all those liquids, all those fluids and everything is like, it's primed. And now though, if it, another way to actually pass that essence into something else is through creation, is actually through having something that you're specifically doing that you're pouring that creative force actually into. And how it passes from one channel to another, like whether it ends up coming out in what you're saying is a wet dream or whether it ends up transcending in, into another area. There has been times where you can even, you know, since we're getting personal about this, that you'll think that you actually had an orgasm or actually ejaculation, but there won't be anything there, but you can actually even feel that it's there uh, and I'll make that very clear that, hey, I, I can't explain this yet, but a male can ejaculate and there had been nothing that came out, like physically, but you can feel that there's actually something that is there. It's like the energy itself was ejaculated, but not the actual the physical fluid itself. I just wanted to make sure we cover this entire subject. Yeah, because that's subject. exactly what was happening to me, yeah. Because that, that was exactly what was happening. It's like, it's, it's that there's something there, but it's not actually, it's not actually happening. Yeah, and what they say is that, you know, again, you know, planets are merging at this stage. So, you know, stay tuned for next week and what more it reveals. But that basically that this is the foreground to the Hemaculus, which is... Uh, the golden lotus. So it's basically that in this same vein of knowledge that talks about the seminal retention, it actually talks about what the goal of this is. And these books, you know, I have to, I, when, you, I, when you see my book thing, like it's a lot, like I have to figure out how to get that back online and not go to jail trying to do it. But you know, maybe we could put it in like a private library, but they talk, there's one book that speaks deep about this. It's like an old Chinese book. And what they're basically saying you know, once you get the gist of what's being talked about, is that the last stage of the, this Buddhahood, but not, the, not necessarily the Buddha that they write about right now, but the art of the Buddha, is that the Buddha starts replicating itself. 
to where it becomes completely surrounded by golden versions of itself. And that what these golden versions are is that, and I'm like, yeah, I'm glad we got into this conversation because it allows me to tie things up really uh, like that I wanted to in this conversation because this had to be a deep dive. So let me just give it to you like how it really is and, 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 and no philosophies at all. So there is like an energy, a feminine force that is on the planet that is actually more, correspond, more corresponds to wet dreams. Okay, and this has always been seen as more or less the Lilithian force, which has been known in occultism to steal children. And many took that a little too far with actually thinking that it had to do with them, her physically stealing children out of a crib that were born. But it was actually directly related to that she would impregnate herself from the semen of men's wet dreams okay and this was very known about this was like you know if you was going back in the old days everybody knew that this was going on and there were things that you would do from time to time in order to try to keep this from happening and i don't want to get into that so much because then it's like getting one thing versus the other i just want to talk about the overall benefits of when one could uh get beyond this stage of self because what they do say, though, is what attracts her is things like pornography, things that like uh, basically put you into that aspect of yourself until you graduate. It's literally like something that you graduate and then even pornography and naked pictures and all sorts of stuff don't bring that force back into being able to have that kind of activity. Right. But all this is like, let's say, a ladder. So let me just lay it dry so what happens is is that or wet in this case so what happens is is that so this energy is said to create children from this energy and she has like these kids from pretty much every man that has had these ejaculations and that priests were always trying to prevent this from happening to them because they were like the ones that she was going after the most because they were the ones that were the most sexually oppressed, if you may, and had the most semen cultivated, right? So then Solomon was the only one, and Solomon in this case being a cognate in itself, some kind of code or program from a large bank of, of, of knowledge and memories that have been long forgotten. But Solomon cracks this in the Song of Solomon by explaining that there's also another bride that once one can overcome the first force, which I used to actually see in the dream, like when I was lucid, and I would go into every dream lucid for a while, as I explained before, that this being would appear first. And she was always like the best looking chick that you can think of, dressed in the best seductive clothes that you can think of. And everything was just overwhelming about her energy as far as seduction. And I had a choice. Either I could go with her and have the greatest time you could ever think of because it's also in the astral plane, or I could go behind, I could go to door number two and I would never know what was behind door number two. So it was literally saying, when I cracked this in my mind, because you've got to realize a lot of this stuff is happening in your mind and it's disguising itself as images and pictures and all this kind of stuff. But really it's a function of the consciousness that is trying to get you to understand about yourself that you could take the one where you already know what's going to happen. That's really how it was presented. You already know what's going to happen. You're going to go with her. You're going to have this great time. You're going to ejaculate. Then it's going to be over. Or you can go behind this other door and you don't even know what's going to happen in there. Mystical stuff happens in there. But you have to have the willpower to go to the door that you don't know what's going to happen. And this was always taking place in the onset of my lucid dreams. I actually couldn't get completely lucid, which I would call breaking the dream. I couldn't get completely lucid until I would have to make that choice. And this was just me personally. I don't think everyone uh, uh, goes through this, but I think a lot of us probably do. And so spiritual wisdom revealed that so in the Song of Solomon, he's writing to this other force. And this other force was known as basically the Shekinah, was known as Sophia, was known as the bride, was known as the virgin. She was more of chaste and pious. So this particular being would never come to a man that had lascivious ideas and 
had like women, lots of women and things that he was engaged with. And this, this woman was known as wisdom. Now this, that's why this knowledge is kind of multi-layered because even in one context, it's saying that wisdom never really finds itself in the mind of a man who is still thinking of the vulgarities of everything, right? And, but then also it's saying that you also have to kind of go through this courtship process of being able to get wisdom to now rest on you like a dove. This is, this is basically the Venusian initiation. And that's why I find this is all strange that it's coming up at this point. So in this case, that many would tarry, meaning that they would actually go for prolonged periods of fasts, whatever those kind of fasts were, in order to receive this Holy Ghost, which was the bride. And in this tearing process, the only thing that you really practice was an aesthetic of purifying yourself, just purifying the consciousness, purifying the mind. And that in this stage of continuous purity, that she would become more and more attracted to you. And again, this could be seen in different levels. She would become more and more attracted until she allowed you to take her on as a bride. And then once that happened, you would gain this consciousness that, and I can speak from experience, that always shows up. Like at, it's most pre prevalent at around 3 a.m. And it's all wise. It just knows everything about everything and just keeps talking about every single thing that you need to know. And it never forsakes you. And this is interesting because it talks about, again, as it calls it the counselor, and it says that the counselor will never forsake you. And so what it's basically saying is, is that once you get to a certain stage of leveling up in your consciousness and realizing, you know, how you're entreating certain things and energies with your body, and then you seek to actually, you know, get really into a relationship with wisdom, once it rests on you, it never leaves, just like in a real relationship with a, with a real bride, no matter what you went through or did or happened after that, that wisdom and knowledge would always be with you. And it was always seen as an achievement that every man should try to go for in their life in order to obtain this bride. And that was the Song of Solomon. That's the decryption of what the Song of Solomon is actually all about. So in conclusion, <clears throat> I think that we're getting a little bit deeper here. Uh, so, okay, so there, Patty's question, so what happens when this is going on with a woman? What we have to learn in all of this is that the human body is actually androgynous. So the same thing that is happening for the male, even if it's like flipped inside out, is also happening for the female. So I would assume for sure that there is a, just like a, there's an Abraham and there's a Saraswati, there's also, let's say, the Sophia, and then there's the masculine aspect of what Sophia would be. So these divine virtues, if you may, are in themselves achievements that like, can be reached if one chooses to take certain paths. Now, I think the wrong thing to do here would be to insist that everyone has to do this, but the best thing that we could attain from this is knowing that it's like one of those things that's like a vase on the shelf that's glowing and sparkling. If one can go through the proper sequences in order to achieve it, then they would have a great reward. And you yourself, you're actually on that path and you've already seen the benefits. You've also seen the other side of it. You've seen what happens when you continuously would pour forth your essence without um, restraint, right? And you see how also, because this is what they're saying also that you should learn, and these are metaphors about the Lilithian force, which is that it will drain completely. It will basically kill you. Like it will keep trying to drink, also like somewhat of a vampire or a night hag. And I'm sure people give these kind of titles and names around it because it can get that serious. So they're going to try to paint the biggest, you know, wraith. You know, this is a wraith that's draining all your energy. And that, that's really happening, but... It's also a part of lessons and powers and energies that we're to come to realize these are the sequences of life. So that way, when our son comes to us and says, well, dad, this is what's happening to me, you know, wherever 
lesson he chooses or whatever path he chooses to go, basically whatever uh, uh, womb he chooses to be with at that stage, he's not unaware of what exactly is going on. So that way, when he reaches that drain point, like, oh, okay, I can't sleep with Celine anymore. I need to wake up to ISIS or whatever they call it. That they that one knows what that actually is and knows what actions to make. It's like, okay, now I gotta I gotta back off of this kind of life. It's just like my father said. And that's what we're really looking to restore here is not removing our children. And I I, I remember this very clearly and, and is not basically removing the possibilities of this even happening, because I don't think that that's really what you wanna do. I think what you wanna do though is put the proper tutorials around it. So that way when stuff starts happening, there's a greater level of clarity of what is causing that and, and how to move on from it. And so I would for sure say that now is these great, the greatest time for you because you're standing in the face of your resolve. And just like any man that actually would be a bit more weak, weaker against seduction because seduction is a very powerful force. They talk about seduction on the spiritual plane and how it's overcome many. And, but really, instead of seeing it as like a, a biblical straitjacket, more of seeing it as things that you need to understand how to configure in your consciousness and that these are the characters that are being used in order to get you to become aware of that. Because then when you become aware of that, you gain a power. That's one of the sidas. So you gain this power and you've gained that power through the real lessons and experiences that it takes for you to actually become aware of what's going on and what you're doing. And that's exactly what we talked about the other day. And actually a few times since we've had the last conversations about our gifts and that we never truly know how to use our gifts and to we're put into a situation where we don't have them. And now we have to learn step by step, you know, like even with the semen itself, how precious the semen really is. I'm sure you're going to realize more and more of the different things that can actually be done with it. Obviously, it seems to even function somewhat as a bargaining chip. Sometimes men that actually have been able to cultivate more of their spiritual force seem to attract other essences around them. And in that form of attraction, and this is, of course, now you're seeing even a male aspect acting out in its female stage, but even in that attraction goes into a courtship. So this is like the male playing hard to get with its energy in order to attract a better relationship on its feminine side. And then make no mistake, what then happens at some point, as Solomon even admitted, is that this becomes physical, like meaning that a physical person shows up that actually becomes the cognate of exactly what you've been able to achieve on the spiritual plane in that connection. Some people call that the twin flame. They call that the one that they, but it started in another space. And that's why some people that are trying to find the twin flame, like literally looking on apps and, you know, going out to clubs and it will never happen that way happens from within and then once it's fully manifested within then it comes outside then you see the person and all of a sudden it hits off from there and that's of course if that's in the line and the path of where one is going with their projections 